Okay, I've got this Tetro SB230 plugged in. Unknown. But it turned on. I've got connected up to the relay jack. Just a PL259. And I'm going to go through here and just short this out. This is a weird Heathkit 230 doesn't work but it's one that you know you get in a pile of stuff normally it uses an 8873 and what this particular thing has all the powers office hasn't been turned on there's no high voltage power supply in here this is basically a bias for instead of a triode it has a tetrode somebody was fooling around with a pair of tetrodes in here uh, they're four CX 250s in parallel powering this so the heat sink has been removed off the back and it has two four CX 250s in parallel and then this is some type of biasing supply, I believe. And then these are some transformers here that are not the high voltage transformer. They're just some stuff, I believe, powering the different filament voltages, probably. So it's got two transformers, three transformers. None of this is the high voltage stuff in the sense that it's not for the main plate. It's got a plug on the back here, AC. So, it's a nice looking box but totally un unknown. You'd figure if this was powering the tip here, you'd have high voltage here on this tip, or maybe down here. That's probably the output. But then what is this over here? Great, you get some extra box for hardly anything. And then you got to try to figure out how it works or goes into a pile of other stuff to fool with. So, the normal output jack here. Looks like it is hooked up to transmit receive relay and the input over here might be two so the question is that looks like high, high voltage wire it might be that this other PL259 is to feed the high voltage in. And I say that just thinking dumbly out loud is there's no relay on this. Since there's no relay, this is always connected up. So maybe this PL259 here was the input for the high voltage. Or it may have been through here. Lord of mercy. What's going on here? Right and left, there's some pots. Just the bias. I think some of these wires down here go down to the terminal connections here on the tube. 
So that's some of the bias stuff. And the person who built this is long past. It's acquired in some stuff, if that makes any sense. Got a regular 110 volt input. Goes to this connector. And it looks like he's fed it back out to here and over to this. I think there's a fan that, that's probably what that for, there's a blower fan. They pressurize this. But I believe this is set up or was as an experiment to run this as two tetrodes, uh, not triodes, but tetrodes in parallel. Um, I think they're four CX two fifties, if my memory is correct. It's a nice looking box. There's a lot of these floating around with uh, bad tubes. Normally, it's got a eighty eight seventy three here, and there's a big heat sink. There's no fan, and so it probably broke, and then all this stuff. Normally, there's a giant power transformer here for the high voltage and caps. And with a tetrode, you've got an extra an extra grid or plate in there. Get an extra deal in the tube, so that's why there's an extra, uh, extra transformer on there. And one of these is probably the filament for the tubes. And I think there's an extra high voltage here because you got a cap here. It's one of these things I need to bring it up slowly in a very act and see what's going on. And it's got two relays here. That's sure not the transmit receive relay in the sense for the RF with these long wires. Looks like it's still connected right here. Input to output. Got ALC relay. And that's hooked up. Now the tube that's down in here is gone. There's normally the tube in here for the old relay for the uh, tube units. He's removed that too, so complete unknown. It says a 1300 I don't know if it's a zener or not. Some of this is broken too. There's where the tube was. And this plate here is where the caps were. Stuff like this would be fun if you had nothing else to do, but you don't know if it was something he ran 
or something it was just they started with and turned out to be a boondoggle. Hard to figure out what somebody was trying to do. This is the zener down here. I think it's an 8 volt zener. And the fuse holder is not used. But that's normally in series with the fuse holder. Yeah, so I think this unit had an external high voltage supply for the top cap because it connects up to here through the inductor and directly goes out this PL259. And there's no cap. The cap is not on that. That's directly connected up through here. So this PL259 is an input for the high voltage DC. And there's the uh, SB230 relative power grid so this is a unit that's totally been modified years ago I had this for many years as one of these is sat in a kind of a junk pile and I was just kind of looking at it here Got no schematics. I did pull a tube out. That's why I know what the tube is on there. Here's some of the stuff that came with it in a bag. This is an iMac 8322. which is a 4CX350. I think I said earlier 250 uh, is what it was in it. This is a 350. That's a tetrode. That looks like something off of sewer pipes. I don't know if they had that in there or not. Eight three two two air cooled JRJ one one nine seven. I think I wrote that on there earlier. Here's another tube that was in the swap meet deal. This was in a bag and it said from Bulgaria. Eight four S J S four eight seven. That's a three fifty F. That's the same tube I just showed. Not sure if it's an iMac. Tetrode. There's the one pin there. It's connected to this. Yeah, using an eraser, I was able to read this erased. This is stamped D4SJ6487.
Now you got to be careful over here. You can take the 350F came off, so that was kind of a stupid thing to do. But if it's an ink, it's going to come off. But I know this is a 350F. Got this Tetro SB230 plugged in. This is the unknown unit. Got it turned on. I've got a RCA jack plugged into the relay. But this is actually electrically hot. I just touched this and got knocked on my butt. So I don't know what he's doing on here. How it's wired up. He's got it hooked up. This relay and this relay is going. So I'll have to see what he's switching on here. And typical unknown thing, we've got some smoke. So we're going to turn this off or we have a fire. Ha! Good thing I got a fire extinguisher over here. You can't have a cap blow it in your face that's one of the deals on here might just be a bleeder resistor that's got some load across it or it might be there's a and that's an unknown So we're going to turn this off. So the king circuit on here when you short relay is running this and this other one. And we might just have a bad cap here or something. Couldn't really see what was smoking. But on the first take I went ahead and touched this and it wasn't there's probably several hundred volts on there that's why you need a uh, buffering circuit with a solid state unit because these were designed for tube radios and uh, was it the ham how do you pronounce it hambrack whatever has got one so that you don't go through and have a, a fry the king circuit on your modern rig there's no high voltage on this for the plates here. It was back fed through here probably. And then this is the biasing circuit. I was going to go in there and try to measure some voltages, but since we got some smoke here, we're going to just do that some other day. Okay, when turning this on and keying this up, the relay engaged. None of those pins have any voltage on it. So may have be, uh, got an open resistor now. Be really careful on this because this is all open. There is no high voltage on the uh, plates on this particular unit because it comes from an external source. But the two grid voltages probably come from these two transformers. And there was some smoke a second ago, but it's gone. So it may have burned out a resistor.